From WSFA 12 News, this is Friday Night Football Fever. Sponsored by Alpha Insurance, Bath Innovations, Capital Hyundai, Hardee's, Jackson Hospital Sports Medicine, and Pepsi. Welcome into week number three of Friday Night Football Fever. I'm bringing you the action from the studio tonight, but we have Maria Martin on the scene at Strawn. The Tigers taking on the Out Bobcats, plus Charlie Walter covering the Enterprise Prattville Showdown at Stanley Jensen Stadium. But let's get right to the highlights. At Crampton Bowl tonight, Stan O'Belmore taking on the Park Crossing Thunderbirds. It's Malik the Freak Cunningham for the T-Birds, swinging it out to Joshua Knight. And check out the Knight. You might as well crown that fella. 60-yard touchdown scamper off the reception and Park Crossing getting on the scoreboard. Stano turning to his run game. Kareem Jackson, a nice pickup. Juke move there, but the drive would stall. More offense from Park Crossing. This is a triple from a 30-yard field goal. That's Charles Lane that put the T-Birds up 10 to nothing at the half. And your final score from Crampton Bowl, 19-0. The T-Birds over Stanhope. Well, the Fever hit the road at Auburn and Opelika. That, that game was last week. Same great, great crew tonight in Covington County. Maria Martin covering that Strawn Op showdown. A great Fever Country matchup there, Maria. Hey, Steven. You set a showdown. That's definitely what it was, at least in the first half. Strong kept it pretty close in the first half, but I want to take you to the highlights so we can take a look at the craziness that was out here in Covington County. So let's take you to the highlights. A packed Tiger Stadium for a battle of the undefeated. First class 3A region 2 showdown featuring the Bobcats and the Strong Tigers. You see them running out of the tunnel. Let me just tell you, this stadium was rocking from the very beginning. First drive of the game, though, Fever Player of the Week, Brock Hammett with the handoff. Jacob Hawkins with the wheels. A 65-yard run to the one-yard line to set up their first TD of the game. Two-point conversion attempt. No bueno, though. Tigers go up six-zip. First drive for the Bobcats. Orlando Lacey under center. He takes matters into his own hands. Checking out the rearview mirror, inching towards that. Oh, man, look at that. That end zone. Beautiful. Making it look easy. A two-point conversion to follow is good. Op gets up 8-6. And then fast forward. Tigers up 12-8. You see Henry Hennis Washington for the Bobcats showing off that fancy footwork. A dicey little run to get off up again. 14 to 12. Tigers with the ball once again. Here's week two fever athlete of the week for a reason. Mr. Hammett, you better show him something, kid. Breaking three tackles on his way to yet another TD for Strawn. So Tigers, they go up 18-14. And then off has a flashy evening this evening. One of the final plays of the first half. Oh, my goodness. Pay attention. Lacey throwing the ball to Spacey. See what I did there? Tossing up the rock from behind the 50, a budding dynamic duo in Washington, Lacey and Lacey. Washington takes it to the house again, heading into the half. Op up 10, 36, 26 at the half. Op goes on to score three touchdowns in the second half, holding strong to only one touchdown. Op goes on to win this one big on the road. 55 to 32 is your final. What a crazy atmosphere. We've got a lot of things coming your way from this game. This was absolutely insane. Welcome into Friday Night Football Fever. Hey, we've taken the fever on the road with us this week. We are at Veterans Memorial Stadium in Troy. Charles Henderson took on Greenville High tonight. What a game that was. We got another look over here. What was at Crampton Bowl tonight? That is Jeff Davis and Enterprise. We'll get to those highlights in just a minute, but my goodness, what a game between the Tigers and the Trojans. I want to get you straight to the highlights off the top from here at Veterans Memorial Stadium, Greenville, and the Charles Henderson Trojans. Sometimes you get so many great highlights. You have to just throw away what you shoot in the first half. Well, that's where we're going to pick it up. Right at the end of the first half, five seconds to go before halftime. Charles Henderson leading Greenville 14-7. to 7. 
That's Sir Jalen Scott bouncing off Charles Henderson tacklers, ripping off a 50-plus yarder as time expires. They would miss the extra point, but it would be 14 to 13. Charles Henderson in the lead when we went to halftime. So we pick it up in the third quarter. Greenville with it again. Austin Simmons find Malik Bunch. And he scores right there. Number 11 makes the touchdown grab. 19 to 14. Greenville in the lead. This one was back and forth. We're now in the fourth quarter. Jabronski Williams around right in and look at the speed from number three. The Trojans jump back in front 23 to 19 after that touchdown carry. But as I said, stay with us here back and forth in this fourth quarter. It was a barn burner. Diedrich Owens, the running back for Greenville. His second touchdown of the game. That gave Greenville the lead again, 26 to 23. But with the final minutes of the game, it's the go ahead touchdown for Charles Henderson. His third touchdown of the game, his first as a rushing play, check out the moves from Bryson Gandy, the Wildcat formation for the score. That made it 30 to 26. They would add on a, another touchdown near the end of the game, and Charles Henderson would pull away in the fourth, 37 to 26, the final 37 26 win. How do you feel about your performance and, and to get that first W of the season, Bryson? Oh, it feels great to get that first win. We've been wanting it real bad, and we finally got it. We work hard for it. And we're seeing your highlights, and you're actually going to get to see you, see yourself here. The, the fumbled punt. Tell, walk me through this play. A fumbled punt, you scoop and score, and I believe that was the first touchdown of the game, right? Yes, sir, yeah. Walk me through that play. Oh, uh, Bo Robinson, number 32, he made the tackle, and that scoop and score. I was there at the right time. Hi, I'm Kevin Lacey, starting quarterback here at Tuskegee University from Wetumpka, Alabama, and you're watching Friday Night Fever. We are in quarter number two. Montgomery Academy visiting Trinity. Those guys right there giving the hand slaps. So he says, put me on camera, Mr. Gunner. And I did. There you go, fellas. Hope you have a good night. First quarter, Trinity with it. Charlie Trotman picked off by Judkins Blunt and M.A. going the other way. That's a pick six for the Eagles as they soar in for the early lead. Seven to nothing after the extra point and that pick six for Montgomery Academy. He would stay that score into the second quarter. Trinity threatening inside the five. Trotman. Back of the end zone, but it's picked off by Keith White, the guy who scored five rushing touchdowns a week ago. He would eventually be brought down, but Trinity winning at home in a comeback. The final Trinity's first win of the season, 16-7 to over Montgomery Academy. Welcome into Friday Night Football Fever. We have taken the fever on the road to Covington County. It's my alma mater and Delusia at home tonight against the Thomasville Tigers. It was a Region 1 Class 4A showdown. We have action from all over fever country from here in Covington County and on up into the capital city. We'll have plenty of highlights coming your way, but hey, let's start. Got my notes here beside me. Let's start right here on this field. Andalusia and Thomasville. Boy, it was a high scoring affair for one team here. The home team in this one opening drive for the Andalusia Bulldogs and they march right down the field. Ethan Wilson, the quarterback, calls his own number in for the score. 6-0 after the extra point was missed. Bulldogs in the lead. Same score in the second quarter. Play action pass. I was faked. It was such a great play action by Ethan. He slings it deep downfield. And check out Derek McQueen hauls it in for the second Bulldog score. 12-0. Bulldogs in the lead. And McQueen is feeling pretty good after that catch. Andalusia feeling pretty good. Inside the five. Another touchdown made it 20 to nothing after the two-point conversion there. 20-0 Andalusia. And then how about one more score here in the first half? Wilson spinning it deep again, and it's his man McQueen. I believe they said he had 190 receiving yards. Wilson over 300 yards passing, 27 to nothing at the half. And your final Andalusia all over Thomasville in the region win, 37 to zero the final. Let's stay in Covington County and head to Red Level. It's my dad's alma mater. My dad was a straight A student at Red Level. He knows I'm telling a, uh, uh, yeah, that's not true. Sorry, Dad, you know we're not a straight A student. Tigers taking on Georgiana. Red Level back to punt early on, but it's a high snap. Goes into the end zone for a safety for the Panthers. Two to nothing, Georgiana at that point. Later in the first, Georgiana with it. Derek Johnson with the carry. And Johnson is shot from a cannon. He is in for the score. Two-point conversion made it a 10-0 Georgiana lead. Still in the first half. How about this catch in the back of the end zone? Jermichael Stallworth to Derek Johnson. Catches it off the deflection for another touchdown. How about that? We slowed it down for you. 18-0 Georgiana at that point. Georgiana wins it over Red Level 53-22. 
the final. A pair of heavy hitters square off. Jeff Davis and Lee with Lee looking to keep the perfect record untouched. Let's take a look at these highlights. The 1996 Volunteer State Championship team honored tonight for their 20 year anniversary. So cute. They're probably still as hype as they used to be. A lot of chirp ahead of this long standing rivalry, rich in tradition. Also, check out that ball's entrance. They're pretty excited. Well, 15 minutes into the first quarter, Mike Huntley, he's going to get the handoff to Damian Wright. He cranks on the Jets and bolts his way 34 yards for the first TD of the game. Generals go up 7-0. And then, this time in the second quarter, Huntley again, he's going to have a lot of time this time. He has the option and the pass. It's up, complete to Marquise Johnson, showing off the skills with, check this out, and backwards diving in the end zone to get the Generals another TD. Lee goes up 14 zip, and then later in the frame, put it on the highlight reel, kid, a name you all have heard of. Henry Ruggs III on the receiving end of that one, jukes a few defenders, and he gone, untouched, unscathed, into the end zone to go 21 nothing. Lee stays undefeated and wins the battle at the Bowl Big. 41 to 13 is your final from Crampton Bowl. Let's head over to Wetumpka hosting Pelham. The Indians ranked 27th in the state, looking to make it six wins on the season. Pelham with the ball, QB number 14. He passes, but it's intercepted by Nicholas Turner, who runs it. Check this out, all the way back to the other end, to the other end zone, make it a TD. Then the Indian ball. Wetumpka's going to have it again. They're going to be driving. Jadarius Martin, he's going to have the handoff. And then we're still celebrating on that one touchdown. Here's the handoff that you see from Wetumpka. Touchdown. Final. Wetumpka goes on to win this one. 35. Pelham 10. 37 to 0. The final. Andalusia all over Thomasville. And joined by Ethan Wilson, the starting quarterback, and Coach Trent Taylor. And Coach Taylor, this was actually his 200th career win. So congratulations on that. I know you had a lot of success uh, at Strawn and also now here at Andalusia. But tonight, let's talk about tonight. 37 to 0. Big region game. You know what worked for you guys against this guy, this team? Wow, Stephen, it was really amazing. I mean, our, our, our defense, you know, pitching the shutout like they did, and uh, you know, offensively, you know, Ethan, the receivers. I mean, our offensive line. I think everything just kind of came together tonight. They were a team that really concerned us watching them on film. But uh, I was really proud with how physical we played on both sides of the ball tonight. And that win puts you guys now at six and one. Feeling pretty good right now? No doubt, no doubt. Well, let's move over to Ethan. Uh, Ethan, I played quarterback here. I was a lefty too. I set the bar high, man. I set it high. Not really. I didn't play. So you out there, 311 yards passing, uh, one rushing touchdown, three passing touchdowns. Tell me what was working for you out there against that Tiger defense. Um, like Coach Taylor said, uh, we watched them on film, and they, they looked really good. And so I was just trying to go out and not, not do too much. Um, my offensive line did a good job all night, giving me uh, protection I needed. And we, we have to me the best receivers in the state so I feel like I can just throw it up and let them go make a play so that's that's just how it worked out and I'm thankful for the win got the win tonight they're already looking ahead to next week who's up who's up next uh, Satsuma there you go Andalusia Bulldogs moving on to Satsuma guys thank you very much Win over Northview. Carver, Northview uh, went over Northview last night. Let's keep the fever going to Central Phoenix City. The Red Devils welcoming in Tyrone Rogers and the Lee Generals. Central giving Lee a healthy dose of Jackson Carson, the senior, taking it in for the touchdown there. 17 0 Red Devils at that point. Lots of star power in this game. Henry Ruggs, a big time recruit here, takes that one 59 yards for the touchdown, pulls the Generals. To within 10 points of CPC. By the way, if you ever wonder why Markel Benton's going to Alabama, well, watch this play. The big CPC guy laying the lick right there. Benton laying into the chain gang as well. Later on the drive, it's Patterson looking over the middle. This one be picked off by Montravius Floyd. Central Phoenix defense looking good tonight. And your final Central Phoenix City all over Lee, 59-26. To Crampton Bowl, a battle for the top spot in Region 2. Class 6A Lanier and Park Crossing, both unbeaten in region play. T-Birds down 10-3 in the third. Chip shot field goal, but Jake Lane will be off the mark. Lane's off the upright as a 10-3 Lanier lead. Same score into the fourth quarter. Malik Cunningham back to pass. His pass will be tipped and check out the diving grab from Marcus Cole for the interception. 
for the Poets. But a few plays later after that interception, Lanier gives it right back to the T-Birds. Mario Davis steps right in front of that pass. Interception for the T-Birds. Nice return deep into Lanier territory, and that would lead to Park Crossing's first touchdown of the game. Miles Broadnax hammers his way in to tie the game at 10-all. Park Crossing gets a Jake Lane field goal late, and that is your final 13-10. The T-Birds with the win, and also Park Crossing, your region champion. Welcome into Friday Night Football Fever. We have taken the fever on the road to Covington County. It's my alma mater and Deluja at home tonight against the Thomasville Tigers. It was a Region 1 Class 4A showdown. We have action from all over Fever Country from here in Covington County and on up into the capital city. We'll have plenty of highlights coming your way. But hey, let's start. Got my notes here beside me. Let's start right here on this field. Andalusia and Thomasville. Boy, it was a high scoring affair for one team here the home team in this one opening drive for the andalusia bulldogs and they march right down the field ethan wilson the quarterback calls his own number in for the score 6-0 after the ex extra point was missed bulldogs in the lead same score in the second quarter play action pass i was faked it was such a great play action by ethan he slings it deep downfield and check out Derek McQueen hauls it in for the second Bulldog score. 12-0 Bulldogs in the lead and McQueen is feeling pretty good after that catch. Andalusia feeling pretty good inside the five. Another touchdown made it 20 to nothing after the two-point conversion there. 20-0 Andalusia. And then how about one more score here in the first half? Wilson spinning it deep again, and it's his man McQueen. I believe they said he had 190 receiving yards. Wilson over 300 yards passing, 27 to nothing at the half. And your final Andalusia all over Thomasville in the region win, 37 to zero the final. Let's stay in Covington County and head to Red Level. It's my dad's alma mater. My dad was a straight A student at Red Level. He knows I'm telling a, uh, uh, yeah, that's not true. Sorry, Dad, you know we're not a straight A student. Tigers taking on Georgiana. Red Level back to punt early on, but it's a high snap. Goes into the end zone for a safety for the Panthers. Two to nothing, Georgiana at that point. Later in the first, Georgiana with it. Derek Johnson with the carry. And Johnson is shot from a cannon. He is in for the score. Two-point conversion made it a 10-0 Georgiana lead. Still in the first half. How about this catch in the back of the end zone? Jermichael Stallworth to Derek Johnson. Catches it off the deflection for another touchdown. How about that? We slowed it down for you. 18-0 Georgiana at that point. Georgiana wins it over red level 53-22. The final. A pair of heavy hitters square off. Jeff Davis and Lee with Lee looking to keep the perfect record untouched. Let's take a look at these highlights. The 1996 Volunteer State Championship team honored tonight for their 20-year anniversary. So cute. They're probably still as hype as they used to be. A lot of chirp ahead of this long-standing rivalry, rich in tradition. Also, check out that ball's entrance. You're pretty excited. Well, 15 minutes into the first quarter, Mike Huntley, he's going to get the handoff to Damian Wright. He cranks on the Jets and bolts his way 34 yards for the first TD of the game. Generals go up 7-0. And then, this time in the second quarter, Huntley again, he's going to have a lot of time this time. He has the option in the pass. It's up, complete to Marquise Johnson, showing off the skills with, check this out, a backwards diving in the end zone to get the Generals another TD. Lee goes up 14 zip, and then later in the frame, put it on the highlight reel, kid, a name you all have heard of. Henry Ruggs the third on the receiving end of that one, jukes a few defenders in, he gone, untouched, unscathed, into the end zone to go 21 nothing. Lee stays undefeated and wins the battle at the Bowl Big, 41 to 13 is your final from Crampton Bowl. Let's head over to Wetumpka hosting Pelham. The Indians ranked 27th in the state, looking to make it six wins on the season. Pelham with the ball, QB number 14. He passes, but it's intercepted by Nicholas Turner, who runs it. Check this out, all the way back to the other end, to the other end zone, make it a TD. Then the Indian ball, is going to have it again. They're going to be driving Jadarius Martin. He's going to have the handoff. And then we're still celebrating on that one touchdown. Here's the handoff that you see from Wetumpka. Touchdown final. Wetumpka goes on to win this one 35, Pelham 10. 37 to 0, the final. Andalusia all over Thomasville. And joined by Ethan Wilson, the starting quarterback, and Coach Trent Taylor. And Coach Taylor, this was actually his 200th career win, so congratulations on that. I know you had a lot of success uh, at Strawn and also now here at Andalusia. But tonight, let's talk about tonight. 37 to 0, big region game. You know, what worked for you guys against this, guy, this team? Wow, Stephen, it was really amazing. I mean, our, our, our defense, you know, pitching the shutout like they did and, uh, you know, offensively, 
you know, Ethan, the receivers, I mean, our offensive line, I think everything just kind of came together tonight. They were a team that really concerned us watching them on film, but uh, I was really proud with how physical we played on both sides of the ball tonight. And that win puts you guys now at 6-1, and one, feeling pretty good right now? No doubt, no doubt. Well, let's move over to Ethan. Uh, Ethan, I played quarterback here. I was a lefty, too. I set the bar high, man. I said it high. Not really. I didn't play. So you out there, 311 yards passing, uh, one rushing touchdown, three passing touchdowns. Tell me what was working for you out there against that Tiger defense. Um, like Coach Taylor said, uh, we watched them on film, and they, they looked really good. And so I was just trying to go out and not, not do too much. Um, my offensive line did a good job all night, giving me uh, protection I needed. And we, we have, to me, the best receivers in the state, so I feel like I can just throw it up and let them go make a play. So that's that's just how it worked out, and I'm thankful for the win. Got the win tonight. They're already looking ahead to next week. Who's up Who's up next? Uh, Satsuma. There you go. And Alusia Bulldogs moving on to Satsuma. Guys, thank you very much. All right, let's head to Ufala. The Tigers at home against Headland. First play of the game, Ufala QB Taylor Grover throws it to Victor McClinton, and McClinton goes 55 yards for the Ufala touchdown. Still in the first at Ufala. The Tigers with the ball again. Gover again to McClinton. This guy was just all over the field. 53 yards for that one. He's already over 100 yards receiving with just those two catches. Headland with the ball now. Quarterback Preston Hancock's pass is intercepted by Ufala's Joe Tolbert. He runs it back 27 yards for the touchdown. Ufala all over Headland tonight. 55 to 14, your final there. You follow with a big W. Now, we saw the highlights just a few moments ago on the Fever. Let's send it right back to Maria Martin, who's talking with the winners from that thrilling game between Opelika and Wetumpka. The Bulldogs pulling off the upset there on the road. Maria? Stephen, a thriller. What else could you say? A thriller. Wow. All of the adjectives to describe this crazy 38 37 victory, especially on the road. I've got head coach Brian Blackman of Opelika next to me. and. You talked about the mentality of this team, a championship mentality team. Now you guys are region champions for the third year in a row. Just talk about how proud you are of these kids tonight. Well, I'm incredibly proud of them. Uh, you, you don't win this game against a quality opponent like Wetumpka without having a bunch of guys that love each other, care about each other. And uh, this is a high character group of kids. And, um, you know, every day they come to work, they got that lunch pail attitude. Uh, but, you know, tonight was just our night. We made one more play. And uh, I don't know if we had much left in us at the end, but uh, I take my hat off to Coach Perry and his group of Wetumpka. Uh, this was a, a class group of young men fighting for their community just like ours was. And, uh, shoot, we were blessed to be a part of it. Friday night, we got, got that fever, fever baby. baby. That we football fever, fever, baby. baby. Friday that was pretty night. good. I like that. Laverne taking on Flomington tonight looking for win number five of the season. Flomington with the ball. Number five passes it, but it's intercepted by Laverne's Antavius Brown. He's going to take that down. Then Laverne with the ball here. Deontay Brantley keeps it himself to set up this field goal try. The field goal to follow is no good. This one turned out to be a close one. Laverne wins this 29-28. to Go to the Eagles to win tonight. They know what time it is. You know what time it is? It's Friday night. Two heavy hitters in this one. The Brantley Bulldogs hitting the road to Goshen. Brantley with the ball. Jacob Free is punting. He fakes it. Passes it to Nathan Renfro. Doing the run. The ball stripped, though. Check that out. Perfect hands by Jaquentin Daniels. He recovers it for Goshen. Then Goshen with the ball. Zachary Alford in wildcat formation and gets it to the first yardage. This team, these teams went back and forth tonight. It's another close one. Another very, very close one. Goshen wins this one, 26. Brantley, 12. Let's set it back out to Tuskegee. Steven is talking to the winning team of our featured game. Steven, hey, what's up? Well, Maria, 36 to 7, your final. Booker T. Washington defeating Russell County 7 and 3 on the season. As we said earlier, uh, a, a record best for this school. They've never reached this win total before, and I think they're, they don't want to be done right now. Coach Maurice Hurd joining me right now. Uh, Nathan Harrison, the starting center. Who says offensive linemen don't get love? We've got an offensive lineman joining us right here. And I heard some people singing the Fever song. The PA was giving us Fever shout outs all night here in Tuskegee, so we thank them for that. They welcomed us with open arms. But, Coach, we'll get right to it. 7 and 3 record. This community has just been buzzing about this team. You guys pick up another impressive win tonight. Almost got the shutout, but you got to be impressed with how this team finished the regular season. Yes, I'm really so proud of these 17 seniors and this entire football team for just the work ethic that they've displayed all year. These guys really want to get it done. They want to make history. They want to make it to the playoffs, and I'm just so proud of the way they've played all year. And We're looking forward to going to Viger and playing a good football game. 
you, you, I asked you after the game, is there a senior, a player that you can uh, have for us to do the interview? And you said, this guy right here, the offensive lineman. And that, and that means a lot when you're nominated, when the, the quarterback throwing multiple touchdowns. That means you did your job, did the dirty work. Man, what's made this team so special this year to make it to the playoffs for the first time in school history? Well, honestly, we just came together as a unit and said we wanted to make history. And we was like, just come out, perform, and take game by game. So chemistry made it happen. How's this team in there in that locker room after this final regular season win, knowing you guys are going to be right back on the field next week, first round of the playoffs? I mean, is that kind of set in for you guys yet? I mean, we're pretty excited, but we know we got business ahead of us, so we're just taking it game by game. I'll tell you one thing. It means you get out of school a little bit earlier next week. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, don't smile too much about that, teachers. He, he'll still do the, the schoolwork leading up to next week's Viger Booker T. Washington game on the road. Class 1A, Maria Martin in Nota Solga tonight. Blue Devils taking on Linden. Finally, we have some football weather out there. Maria, I hope you brought a jacket with you because we are now in football weather. Hey, Stephen, I actually borrowed Shawnee's hat. Shawnee's one of our directors here at WSFA. I, I borrowed her hat because it was really cold, and I saw some kids out in snow gear, believe it or not. I don't think it's cold enough for that yet, but I could have used a snow jacket. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm a wimp when it comes to the cold weather. But I know these boys were very excited to be playing in this weather tonight. We talked about how physical this game was going to be at 6 o'clock, and it was in the first half. No, Solga was kind of keeping it competitive in the first half and then Linden ran away with this one. They've now scored 125 points on offense in the playoffs to keep it very interesting when it comes to their offensive movements so far. So let's take a look at how it all went down. We got a fever! Welcome to a Class 1A matchup in Round 2 of the playoffs. Notice Olga hosting Linden. It's the Battle of the Blue Devils and the Patriots. First quarter, scoreless, Christopher Robinson under center for the Patriots. The Rock goes through the air. Isaiah Scott comes down with it for the game, and that's going to set up a quick two-yard burst up the middle by Robinson with the QB keeper for the score. Extra point no good, though, Linden. They're going to go up by six. Now we head to the second quarter. Robinson with the handoff to Quan Charleston on the outside, putting some miles on the ground. See you later, kid. He's going to add some points on the board there. Another score for Linden, and the extra point is good this time. Linden routes Nota Solga on the road 48-15 to to advance to the next round in the playoffs. I got a chance to talk to Patriots head coach Andrew Williams after the game. Uh, you know, I tell them, you know, we have to show some resiliency during the stretch of this playoff run. Um, you know, it's about being in position, doing, the, doing our jobs, but at the end of the day, you have to be able to show some resiliency when they – push you a little bit further, you have to be able to fight back and um, do what you have to do, you know, and uh, this time of the year that you got to have that, you know, your team got to have that, you got to have some leaders to step up. We got some great leaders on our team, so we're, we're depending on those guys to push us on, on forward. On Prattville Christian night, just before the half, ACA up 7-6, to six. Reese Solar back to pass, but he's picked off by Tyler Bell, and you can ring that bell the other direction. Doesn't take it all the way back for a pick six, but he gets a nice return into ACA territory. Very next play on offense for PCA. Bell connects with Preston Cox over the middle for the touchdown. Failed the two-point conversion, made it 12-7 at the half, but ACA was down at the half, comes back and wins a thriller. 34-33 right there. ACA winners at home. The Auburn High Tigers taking on Mary G. Montgomery tonight. Auburn with the ball here in the first. Hands off to Garrett Morris. Garrett Morris was a nominee week number one for Fever Star Athlete of the Week. He's in for the score. Next series, Auburn goes right back to Mr. Morris. And he is down inside the Viking 10-yard line. Number 25 getting loose for Auburn High tonight. And that run leads to, well, Morris will get you to the end zone again. Punches it in for the touchdown. It's the Garrett Morris show tonight for Auburn. Mary G. Montgomery did answer on his next drive with Josh Williams taking it in for a touchdown. But Auburn High too much tonight. Auburn winning big 42-14 to on the road over Mary G. Montgomery. Hey, let's head it back to our official Fever Stadium for the site of our Fever on the Road. It's Hot O'Brien Stadium. Tallacy and T.R. Miller. Maria Martin has more on that showdown. Hey, Stephen, I already broke down all the highlights for you, but head coach Andrew Thomas for the T.R. Miller Tigers, he got his third win of the season tonight. He was very excited after the game. Of course, this means so much to him after taking over the head coaching job from a legend, Jamie Riggs, 38 years of coaching, and he's so excited to be in this position. I caught up with him after the game and how exciting and dominant this win was for his team. 
It was a big for us because we're, we were bouncing back off a loss. A big, you know, we had a disappointing loss last week, and um, you know this was big for us to get momentum going through the rest of the season in our region. And um, you know it wasn't a do or die game for us, but um, I, it was huge for us getting that momentum to go the rest of the region and to be able to come on the road and fight. And, you know, kind of struggle early and, and then and then fight back and get the lead like that. Just proud of the way the kids fought. And, um, you know, anytime you can come on the road and, and play a, a good good 4A school like this and pull a win out, I mean, it's um, just a lot of spirit and pride amongst um, those guys. Clearly this has a lot to do with overcoming adversity tonight, and your kids really did that tonight. How proud are you of them? That shows you the toughness of T.R. Miller. Um, you know, that's what this program has been built upon with um, Coach Riggs and the guys before him and this staff that, that I've got, you know, um, those kids have got that built into them and that's what we're just trying to continue and um, they take a lot of pride, you know, and, um, um, you know, we're, we're built to win games like this. If you ask anybody in Alabama if a word about T.R. Miller or Scott T.R. Miller, it would be a tough football team. That's what's preached 24-7 around our field and if you're not tough, then it's not for you. Welcome back to Friday Night Football Fever. Let's keep things rolling right here in the third quarter. Let's send it to the man with the plan in the wiregrass, Justin McNelly, with a pair of games of highlights that you want to see. A Class 6A showdown in the Circle City as Park Crossing takes on Northview, who is looking for its first win on the season. We start, though, with some AISA action. The Northside Methodist Knights hosting Hooper Academy. Homecoming tonight for the Knights. Defense was the key early on. First play from scrimmage, Knights quarterback Bryson Cook is intercepted by the Colts, who get a nice return on this one, but their drive would stall. Later in the first, Rayshad Alexander gets the ball, and he gone 27 yards to the house. Knights go up 8 to nothing, and they win big 35-6. to six. Back at Rip Hughes, this one was over in a hurry. Thunderbirds with a 24 to nothing lead in the second quarter when Park Crossing quarterback Malik Cunningham decides to add to that. The Louisville commit scrambles around in the pocket, then finds a hole, dives for the end zone to give the Thunderbirds a 31 to nothing lead. Cougars looking for life. Northview quarterback Mason Wakefield is going to be picked off by Stephen Thomas, who has an open lane in front of him and reservations for six, 70 plus yards to the house. And the Thunderbirds roll in this one 38 to nothing. Anytime you can get a region win, we're 2 0 in the region now, uh, so it really sets us up for a good run. It was fun tonight. I had, I had took the night off last week. Our running game was really working. And this night, uh, I put on a show for you guys. 